Greetings, I am Ian Shadden, a technical account manager here at Emerging Game Technologies. This is the first in a series of instructional videos on the tools of Gamebrio. In this video set, I'll be going over the basics for the Maya tools, initial setup, where all the key buttons are, interfaces and their usages in the new multi-shader, and finally some hidden or easily missed bits. For reference, I'll be using Maya 2008, though this will work with any version of our Maya plugin. Further, very little should change between the supported versions of Maya. Now, I'm assuming you've gone through the installation off the DVD and selected to install the plugins when prompted to by the installer. So let's go ahead and load up our plugins. I'm going to go up to uh, Window, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. We need to load the uh, My Immerse 2008. I get an error. It's because I don't have a PS3 viewer. My bad. Uh, I go ahead and auto load that. We're also going to load up the uh, Neem Multi Shader. Go ahead and auto load that. And if you have the PhysX plugin loaded, go ahead and uh, do that as well. So, with that done, you'll see uh, we now have a new Gamebryo bar. Sweet. And also, if we go into the uh, Hypershade, you'll see that we have the new multi shader ready to rock. So, that's actually all there is to setting up Maya for use with a uh, Gamebryo. So, there you go. So, with our plugins loaded, let's go ahead and see what each one of these buttons do. First one here, going to bring up our export options. So the first one, export display options. Uh, general stuff on what to kick out to. So the D3D viewer or the asset viewer or maybe the animation tool, whatever you think is best. Um, just something I was noticing while I was setting all this up is that I'd select the game viewer asset viewer and it wasn't loading the asset viewer. So I just went down to here, custom uh, viewer, and selected scene viewer. And that seems to bring it up okay. Also, we can set up which platform we're trying to export and view to. So, you know, before when I didn't have the PS3 plugin, yeah, you can kind of click the PS3 and sort of dump out to it really quick. Then background color. This is essentially for the D3D viewer. It'll just, it's normally just black, but you can change it to whatever color you want. Texture options, uh, procedural bakeouts, uh, the checker sort of stuff that you can do within Max and Maya. We can go ahead and just bake all that right out and give you a texture for it and then the uh, maximum size control for all textures. Oh, and uh, right in here we have the uh, generic texture properties <clears throat> for, let's say, the 360, uh, DX9, DX10, PS3. We can control, you know, for the Xbox if we decide to go to it. Let's say we want DXT5 for the Xbox and reduce the texture size by a fourth. So we can go ahead and do that for the Xbox. But for the PS3, you know, we want 24, 32-bit, and we're only going to reduce them by half, you know, just arbitrary in that case. Lighting options, um, optimize the scenery lights. We'll get into that. Animation options, uh, when we go ahead and get back into that and get to uh, animation in later videos, we'll go into what we can do here. Silent export uh, mutes a lot of stuff. I get a lot of questions. <laughs> like, hey, your uh, your textures aren't power of two. You want me to correct that? And I'm like, yes, correct it. Thank you. That'd be great. Just do it. And of course, it always asks me. And then the mesh packing profile, which we'll get into at a later date. So that's that. First button here is going to export our scene. Um, it doesn't default ask for where you want to export it. You can also go up to export all. Say you want it as a NIF. Give it a nice name. Hey, empty. Cool. Export. It'll go through the default script that you have set up when you actually hit the key. So, so we go through here, default export script. We could do multi-export and things like that. Go ahead and have it do that for us. Or we can come into the options here. And we can get to all that information as well. So that's that. The next one is actually export selected. This little ball means by selected. You'll see it like right down here on this one too. So it'll only export what you have selected. Next button here is our viewer. So let's go ahead and uh, drop in something to view. We'll drop in a cube. Cubes are free. Cubes are awesome. Then we come back here and say, let's view it. 
And we'll load up the game for your asset viewer. Sure enough, there's a cube. Yay, cubes. And then if we go ahead and add another cube, actually just duplicate this one. We have two cubes. And we'll export by selection. And of course, we only have one cube. The further of the two. So there you go. That's what that is. Pretty simple. Uh, next one has to do with lighting. Need a light to show it. So rendering. Add a light. So now that we add up a light, go in here, check it out. This is a specialized uh, attenuation dialog. So we can define, you know, distances for each one of the, how light will attenuate. Um, you know, or at least it'll give you numbers for it. This is so you can get a feel for uh, the numeric values of what the intensity of the light will be at certain ranges. Um, I find it kind of useful. I think it's pretty cool. That's me. Next one, creates a switch node. We'll get into that later. So with all that attenuation and that light, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. The uh, next button here, billboard, really quick. Click it, adds the billboard functionality to an object. So when we go ahead and view it, and go ahead and go to the next camera. You can see that it's got sort of this rotational thing going on where it's trying to face the camera. Um, again, we'll get more in depth with that later. Next one, create dynamic texture light. These are specialized lights. You can create shadow casting only lights or projection kind of lights very quickly, very easily. Um, again, we'll get into this more in depth stuff later. Sequence Editor, also known as the Animation Manager in Max. This is where we'll go ahead and, you know, when we get into the character stuff, we'll add our roots and we'll start, you know, telling it what our animations are. And when we finally get stuff in there and we can get them and get the animations going, get them named, we can start talking about the accumulation route, morph tags, text keys, all the good stuff that, you know, all the animators are dying to know about. 